We want an attorney general that has the strength to identify those who are responsible, who is not afraid that their post will be taken, who is not scared of someone who is the president, the governor, a senator, a lawmaker. It's exactly three years since 43 student teachers went missing in Mexico and their relatives are still waiting for answers and justice. The official account of what happened is that police detained the students and handed them over to a drug gang who then killed them and burned their bodies. But a new investigation claims the evidence completely contradicts that. A research agency known as Forensic Architecture has compiled data from the day the students disappeared. They plotted the movements of hundreds of people connected to the scenes of the crime, including Mexican security personnel. The publishers say the tool highlights the inconsistencies in the testimonies provided in court. So does the government's version of events collapse under scrutiny? Well, joining us now from Manchester is political analyst Colin Harding. He's the director of Latin Form, a Latin American political consultancy. Colin, good to have you on the Newsmakers. So, you know, three years on, many people have almost come to terms with the fact that these young men are probably dead. But the question is, who killed them? And why does it seem as if the official story has so many holes? Why don't we know what happened? Well, there have been several reports now, uh, all of which cast doubt on the official version. Uh, one by a group of Argentine forensic anthropologists who are very well known internationally. One by a, an independent group of experts appointed by the Organization of American States as human rights body. Uh, and they all say that the, the scientific evidence uh, shows that the, the version given by the, uh, the, the official inquiry that the bodies were burnt in a rubbish dump um, in a small town in, in, in Guerrero State, it just wasn't possible. I mean, it, it couldn't have happened that way. And, and there, there have been allegations, uh, including by the, the, the uh, human rights people, that um, the government actually obstructed uh, the investigation. That they, they blocked access to important witnesses and they, they withheld evidence and so on. And there is a suggestion that there has been a, a cover-up um, that justice hasn't been done. And this is why campaigners are still calling for the real truth to, to come out. But, but when the government comes out with a charred bone fragment recovered from the bag that was presumably the bag that they used to sort of toss remains into uh, a river, and there, there, was a, there was one positive match to one of the missing students, 20-year-old Alexander Mora Venancio, right? So when you have the DNA of one of them, and that sort of helps corroborate the government story, why shouldn't people take them at their word and say, okay, fair enough? Well, this is very fragmentary evidence. And, and of course, the, the, um, the, the other evidence uh, proves that, uh, or demonstrates that, that, uh, that, 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 that there, is, there are big holes in the official account. So uh, one little fragment of bone, is, it, it doesn't really amount to very much as far as, as people who cast doubt on the official version are concerned. Um, and there have been some, more than 30,000 disappearances in Mexico in the last few years, and uh, lots of uh, fragments of bone. They're, they're one of the investigations into the rubbish dump suggested that the, a number of human remains had been burnt at various times. Uh, these other disappeared people, perhaps, uh, but there's no evidence linking, they said there's no evidence linking the fragments that have been found to the, to the students. When we look at Peña Nieto's government and how they've handled this over the past three years, can we categorically say cover-up or might it just be incompetence? Might they just be bad at trying to figure this out? Well, there have been suggestions that the government really doesn't have the the the, the uh, judicial framework uh, necessary for this carrying out this kind of investigation. That there's been too much political interference. There's too much, uh, well, possibly incompetence, as you as you as, as you suggest. Uh, um, there's nothing conclusive about anything here, and I think one of the complaints of the campaigners and the families of the of the missing students is, is that there's no conclusive report of the, the government's own version is, is by no means conclusive, and nobody's really satisfied with this. The government calls this the historical truth, but uh, there are an awful lot of people uh, outside the government who are not convinced by that. I, I wonder what you think about one of the theories put forward by international investigators, that when the students 
hijacked those buses in order to get to a protest. One of the buses was loaded with heroin. They didn't know this, and this got them embroiled in a sort of crazy standoff with cartels and so on, and that eventually um, snowballed or created a domino effect leading to their deaths. How plausible do you think that is? Well, that, that's one of the that's one of the, um, uh, the theories that's been put forward and hasn't really been properly investigated. Uh, anything to do with drugs in Mexico is certainly plausible in the sense that the, 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 the drugs-related violence in Mexico has been uh, spiraling in, in, in recent years. And the state of Guerrero, where this where these disappearances took place, is one of the epicenters of, of drug-related violence. The, uh, the, the resorts of Acapulco and Puerto Vallarta, for instance, which are big international holiday resorts, are also centers of extreme violence. And, uh, um, and Guerrero has always been a, known as a, as a lawless state, and this is very much the case in recent years. Um, so anything uh, linking this case to, to drugs is certainly possible. It is possible that the drugs were stashed in the buses, that, they, that either the students knew about it or they didn't know about it. In either way, that they, were, they became involved in a... Um, uh, uh, situation in which they, they, they became the victims, but uh, the, there's nothing conclusive at all. I mean, the, the, this is certainly one of the lines of inquiry which really hasn't been pursued very, very closely. Three years on, given that the government now is not that cooperative because they feel as if, by and large, they've got the story sorted. As you say, they've used the phrase historical truth. Things are so nebulous regarding the story. Are we ever going to get to the bottom of it? <laughs> well, that's a good question. I mean, possibly not. Uh, it, it is not inconceivable that, that further evidence will emerge and that, that perhaps a, a future government, there, there is every possibility that the opposition, the left-wing opposition, will win in next year's presidential election and maybe they will uh, launch another inquiry which will come up with, with more evidence. But uh, it's very difficult to say at the moment. Uh, it, it is perfectly possible that we never really know the truth. Extraordinary story. When the news broke three years ago, um, it, it, was, it would have been difficult to imagine that we'd be here three years on not actually knowing what really happened because we presumed we'd find out within weeks or, you know, at most months. Colin Harding, it's been good to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us on the Newsmakers.